Rahim. If Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "If everyone does the wrong," It does not make the wrong right. Now, the beautiful thing about this Best of EM conference and the beautiful thing about this crowd is that there's a mixture of all disciplines. There's paramedics, there's nurses, there's students, residents, interns, registrars, consultants, people from different specialties that are here in this room. Now, probably it is rare that we all agree on one thing. And even me and my colleagues, we hardly agree on anything. But there's one thing that we will all agree on. And that is, if we do have a medication that is known to save lives in a specific situation, and that situation comes to you, and you do have that medication, and you do not give it to that patient, that is malpractice. Or misconduct. Whatever you want to call it. Now, I like to talk a bit about statistics, but today, for the sake of this conference, I'm not going to talk about statistics for two simple reasons. Reason number one, statistics are boring. Reason number two, it's going to be forgotten in, within five seconds. So I'm going to skip. However, I am going to mentioned a tweet that was tweeted by the head of our adult unit, Dr. Tawfiq Al-Mizani, and in Arabic it says, وَجَعَلْ إِحْتِفَالْ بِأُسْبُوعَ الْمُرُورِ لِيُذَكِّرُنَا بِكُلِّ أَسَفْ وَحُزُنْ أَنَّنَا أَوَّلْ دَوْلَ فِي إِحْصَائِيَاتِ الْحَوَادِثِ الْمُرُورِيَةِ Enough said. Now, to translate in English, we had the traffic week just less than 10 days ago, and Dr. Tawfiq Al-Mizani sarcastically said it came to remind us that we rank the highest in the number of car accidents in the world. Now, what happens in trauma or in surgery or in any situation where you bleed is that your body responds by developing this beautiful fibrin layer that holds the activated platelets and the pa packed RBCs together and form a nice clot and prevent blood from escaping. Which brings me to the problem in trauma. Unfortunately, we have this pathological response that I will go over in a second. We'll talk about the lethal triad, which is acidosis, hypothermia, and coagulopathy. Coagulopathy is one of the disasters, and it's one of the killers when it comes to trauma and surgery. But for the sake of this talk, we'll, we'll stick to trauma. What happens is the body develops this pathological response, which is known as hyperfibrinolysis. So whatever happens during the clotting cascade is broken down and your patient will start to bleed and bleed and bleed and we will all go into the there will be blood scenario and it will just be a very messy um, situation. The medication I'm going to talk about is tranexamic acid. Some of you know it as tranexamic acid or TXA or cyclocaprin, but the majority probably don't know how to pronounce the medication. There's so many different ways, and some people probably avoid using it because they don't want to say, I want to use tranexamic acid. And I've heard this at another presentation. This medication has been going on for, has been around for a very, very long time. And it's been used as a beauty product somewhere in Southeast Asia to lighten your skin. Some people use it as a mouthwash. I know in Japan they use it as an over-counter medication for headache. And there is one FDA-approved indication for the menorrhagia or heavy menses. Now, the way it works is very simple. But I'm going to talk to you first about a medication that works the exact opposite, which is TPA. TPA is a clot-busting medication. The way TPA works is as follows. From its name, it's tissue plasminogen activator. So it converts plasminogen to plasmin, and plasmin basically breaks the clot. Tranexamic acid, what it does is the exact opposite. It prevents the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin, and therefore promotes or prevents the breaking down of the fibrin clot, and at the end you will have this very beautiful, creamy, chewy, leathery layer of fibrin that keeps everything together. Well, let's go to the evidence. 
The evidence is very clear on this. We had the CRASH-2 trial. The CRASH-2 trial was published in the Lancet in 2010, and it's probably one of the very few practice-changing papers that came out in the past decade. This was, just from what the image is telling you, this is a randomized controlled trial. And what that means is that the, the, the physician giving the medication does not know what he's giving. In this situation, it was either tranexamic acid or normal saline. On the other hand, the patient doesn't know what he's getting either. In this situation, it was either tranexamic acid or normal saline. They had more than 20,000 patients, 10,000 patients in each arm. 10,000 received tranexamic acid, the other 10,000 received normal saline, and they wanted to see what the results were. The primary outcome was death at four weeks or 28 days. The secondary outcome, which makes a lot of sense, if you're giving a medication that promotes clot formation, you need to make sure that your patients don't develop MIs and DVTs and PEs and strokes. So what were the results? I'm not going to talk about relative risk reductions and absolute risk reductions because they're just confusing terminologies for people, for, even for me. We don't, I, I would rather go with the number needed to treat, which is a simple to understand concept. The number needed to, to treat here was 66. What this simply means is that you need to treat 66 patients with this medication to save one life. Now this might not sound very good. This is a very cheap medication. I know in the United States it costs around $12. Let's say if worse comes to worse, here it costs 100 reals plus the tubing. This really means that I need to spend 6,600 reals to save one life. That sounds like a good deal. Secondary outcome, there was no difference. So there was no increased PEs or MIs or DVTs. But there was one thing that was very interesting in the study is that the percentage of patients who had myocardial infarctions was less in the group that received tranexamic acid. Now, by no means, I'm telling you for your next ST elevation, MI, you have to go and give him tranexamic acid. That would rather be um, silly, multiplied by 10,000. We don't do that. But it's safe to give, and it does not cause more clots. Now, the reason behind it was very surprising. When I read the paper, it was a surprise to me, and it was a surprise to the investigators. They said maybe because of reduced um, oxygen demand or it had an anti-inflammatory effect, it was not clear, but all we have to know is that it's safe. Another caveat to the study is that it had to be given early, within the first three hours. If you give it after the first three hours, it was associated with a higher mortality and it's contraindicated after the three hours. During my training, this was one of my quality projects, and I went to the chief, tra the chief trauma surgeon in the hospital, and I asked him, I was like, we have a study that says tranexamic acid saves lives. And he told me very simply, if this study was not done in, in the military, I don't want to hear about it. The military is the most fertile, most research-producing um, ground for, for trauma research. I went home and I did my research, and I found this study that is called the Matter Study, published in 2011. In Afghanistan, it was done in one of the hospitals. The NATO military were involved, the Afghan police, military and civil civilians, and the U.S. troops. I'll give you the results in a second. This is a Afghani soldier receiving um, our very um, beloved textbook, Tintinali, uh, by one of the uh, American soldiers. So basically what they found in the study, although you have to keep in mind, these patients were much sicker and they all had at least one unit of packed RBCs for transfusion or amputated limbs, anticip like strong anticipation that these patients were going to need the, uh, the tranexamic acid. The number needed to treat was seven. Now, if we go back to our basic calculation, it means I need to spend 700 reals to save one life. Again, a very good deal. There is a, uh, a, a branch of the pre-hospital trauma life support. It's called the TCCC, the Tactical Combat Casualty Care. And I just want to go over the 2011 guidelines. The 2011 guidelines tell you very clearly Care under fire, none. And that makes a lot of sense. Under fire, you need to take that wounded soldier and just take him out to a safer area. 
tactical field care, it was still none. The 2015 guidelines have something very, very interesting, and this is free stuff on the website. They actually say, well, we're going to have to still agree that care under fire is still none. However, tactical field care and tactical evacuation care during this period, they emphasize so much on giving the trimoxamic acid pretty much in a warm area. So, and not only that, once you give the first dose, so they say here, after administering the first dose, you write TXA, which is short for tranexamic acid, on the patient's chest wall, if you gave the first dose. If you gave the second dose, you write TXA times two given. And there's a lot of stuff, and they have a very, very easy to read website. This is their last guidelines that was published in February 2015 with all the updates for tranexamic acid in trauma and all the other updates. Now, in terms of cost effectiveness, I have no clue how they did these studies, but there's a few very complex looking equations Bottom line, it is very, very cost-effective for anyone who asks. And they did the study all over the world, in Europe, in the American continent, in South America, in Africa, in Asia. So it's cost-effective even in the areas that are considered to be third, third world or developing. So we don't, it seems that we do not have much of an excuse to give it. One last caveat. We need to remember that it, the tranexamic acid is two doses for those of us here who think we do give the medication. It's not only the first dose. You have to give the first dose, which is a gram over 10 minutes. The second dose is one gram over eight hours, and without giving that second dose, you cannot call yourself a TXA giver. So it is the whole package. All that being mentioned, I dare you to be different and do the right thing. Thank you.